I'm back. Let me get up my pictures. They are, and let me find you guys. We have, uh, I always say we have a lot to cover. We've got a lot to cover today. So, here we go. Um, we had a really, a re there we go. There's Susan Horton. We had a really great weekend. You know, we were supposed to go away for John's real 70th birthday, and everybody got COVID, not us. So we we did do we want to do this? Do we want to do that? And John said, let's go see Top Gun Maverick and and then go out to dinner. Well, I'm glad he asked for it for his birthday because perhaps I wouldn't have gone. Uh, it's pretty good. It's kind of corny in places. We did watch the original Top Gun on Saturday, strongly recommend it. And the fighting scenes in this Maverick. Oh, and I will tell you, uh, it's the real thing. So uh, Tom Cruise talks before the beginning of the movie, and they went to um, the Navy, and they the front were real fighter pilots. So you're seeing the real thing. And then come to find out, one of my sons, my son's BFF, um, he doesn't have that many of <laughs> my son's BFF, he was in Top Gun and ended up uh, being a trainer and a teacher and all that kind of stuff. I don't even know how people think that quickly. And that was one of the lines in it to talk from Tom Cruise. If you have to think you're going to be dead, you just do it. All right. So what we're going to be starting today is a whole thing on hand quilting that will take us up to when we go to taping. But before we get started, it wouldn't be good unless I shared with you a Heidi moment. Or maybe it's a John moment if you want to get straight up with it. He has lost his mind over this cat. Okay, here we go. I got to hit play. There we go. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Keep this. Bring it to me. Bring it here. Good girl. Bring it here. Bring it here. Good girl. Good girl. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. How do I stop it? Stop. He loves that cat. <laughs> and I do too. And he loves playing fetch. And when it's when he stops playing fetch is when he realizes he's the one getting the um getting the the ball or whatever so that's super cute all right um i wanted to show you what i'm working on um i think it's kind of a secret but i need to share you know we love and we're so saddened when roberta horton died and mary mashuda her sister of which we've done a legend show with them is uh, started a challenge that is going to hang in the Mancuso Show West Coast. I'm not sure what else, where else, but um, you got some of Roberta developed beautiful Madra. I think it's called Madra plaids that were just delicious. And Mary would send you some, and then you had to make a piece, and it had to be a specific size. So here is my piece, and I'm trying to decide on binding. And you can see little friend down there said doesn't like this one and is pulling it down. So then I decided I'm going to do two bindings with a subtle change in between. Now, of course, that's cut at two inches and it will be, you know, a quarter of an inch when it's all put on. And I have to say that Diane Schweikert killed it when it came to quilting. Killed it. Uh, all I want is for this quilt to hang with dignity and um, I think it will, but I will tell you right now, it was, it was Diane definitely added to the equation. So thank you, Diane. I'm so glad you live around the corner. Okay, on, on, some, on some sad news, um, probably a lot of you know, but I want to put it up here that Heather Purcell passed on July 29th. And she had been battling cancer for, I think, about a year and a half. And she is Mother Superior of Superior Threads. Heather, to me, was um, 
somebody, if you met her, you never forgot her. And when she would walk the aisles of whatever show, it was like Mother Superior was there. But here's what you need to know. Uh, I will certainly be there uh, on July, on um, this, this Saturday. Well, first of all, she's at the Met Calf Mortuary in St. George. Met calf okay they're going to stream it live and how you're going to on a zoom and how you're going to find it is you're going to go to the met calf mortuary saint george find her obit and there will be a zoom link in there and where it is is it's bob wrote a tribute to her besides the the obit bob wrote a poem that just my gosh they lived she lived an extraordinary life, and it's clear how much they were in love with each other. Um, and the streaming online thing is going to be 10 o'clock Pacific time, 11 o'clock their time. They are in St. George, Utah. So it makes it makes me sad to have to say this, but, um, you know, and, and Bob, I just love him so... I love them both so much. They were just like a dynamo, and I'm going to say that what they did as a couple for the thread industry is extraordinary. They educated us on how to do, how to, you know, what threads to use, what does this, what does that. They made it so it was okay to use good polyester thread again because we were all warded away from that, like, you know, don't do that. And so we will greatly, greatly, I will miss her. And, and, and it puts a hole in my heart. I have very fond feelings for Heather. And the reason I bring it up is because they were a very integral part of TQS. Bob would do thread things. And I mean, I've even been to their house. I had thread with my name on it, masterpiece. I, I, I love these people. Okay, so Heather, I'm thinking of you, girl. All right, so the other thing before we, what, what I'm going to talk about today is fabric when it comes to hand quilting, and that stuff all matters, but I've got some really cool things in the mail that I wanted to share with you. Um, I, you know, when Simply Quilts got canceled, it was super sad because we sucked in a lot of quilters that just happened to stumble on the show before Carol Duvall, but what the quiltshow.com has brought to the plate is connecting quilters worldwide. And we're going through John's birthday cards, thank you. And uh, they're from all over. So the first thing I wanna share is I actually tried to send a thank you uh, email to um, Ellen, but I got this from Ellen. Oh, be nice if you could see, right? Let's go to this camera. I got this from Ellen and it came in this adorable card, all right? And here from England. And the story behind this is flippin' hilarious, okay? It is um, from her daughter's mother-in-law's Belgium godmother, okay? Um, she or her name was Catherine Creon, and <coughs> a, a, a real chocolatier. Uh, most of her clothes were couture, couture and uh, made in Paris, and she thought nothing of chopping them up to alter them. Not very carefully either, because she didn't get that much better as she got older. Um, she wrote a book about how about how she drove, get this one, an old car from London through post-war Europe in the 1950s without even a screwdriver. <laughs> so you can imagine this really uh, got my attention. So let's put this here, okay? What could this be? And then I think about this. Okay, this came from over the pond. It started in Belgium. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of lace work. I may try and clean it with um, that that lace cleaner stuff, that, that retro clean. But it is absolutely potential spam. Yeah, go away. Um, just beautiful. So thank you so much. I tried to email you a thank you and it and it bumped. Okay. Then Wendy sent me some buttons because I'm on the quest, you know, and she sent me some really beautiful buttons, but with what I'm doing, I really want buttons with holes in it. Okay. But, um, and, and these are white buttons and specifically I was looking for, um, 
ivory ones, but now I don't care so much. But anyway, so she sent me this button and there's no holes. And it's for my button embroidery that I'm doing. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this. Probably push the shank through like that and then maybe put some um, more of the wool underneath here. But super cool. And then this is from San Jose, California. Paula Wright. I'm uh, Okay, you guys are going to be button envious. Look at these. I mean, it's funny because, let me see. I, uh... I don't want to mess them up because I got a couple little packages. Okay, that one. There were some in here that were really quite interesting. I saw one on Etsy like that. Boy, that's another place you can go around or down the rabbit hole. Look at those. Those are beautiful. So I don't quite know what I'm going to do, but I am so, 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 so grateful, Paula. Thank you. And then this came from, look at this. It's like treasure trove. Um, Cheryl from um, Chardon, Ohio. Okay, button envy. Button envy. Look at these. Look at these with the crazy outsides. Any, anyways, I'm going to be doing a segment on these on TQS. But also she threw in this little piece, which I've never seen anything like this. This is um, really, really interesting. So... Thank you. I mean, this is a real rough cloth. Maybe I can incorporate some of her buttons on that, on a, on a um, piece of um, wool that's maybe that color or a brown or whatever. Uh, you guys are keeping me busy. You're keeping me honest, and I super, super appreciate it, okay? All right. So, hand quilting. I love hand quilting. Um Sandra, are you doing one? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Anyways, um, focus. I love hand quilting. It is really what brought me to the game. And when I learned from the late Lucy Hilty how to hand quilt, uh, Wendy, who sent me this button, and I went to a show, I think, in San Francisco, and I had to finish a quilt that my grandma started in the 30s, or else I wasn't going to graduate, and I was going to hand quilt it at Grandma's Flower Garden, and I sat down, and I couldn't do it. My, my, all, all my fingers were thumbs, etc. Wendy sat right down and was a duck to water duck to water. And so what I'm going to be sharing over the next couple weeks, uh, today we're going to talk about fabric, Friday we're going to talk about batting, and we're going to go down the whole thing, are things you need to consider when you're hand quilting. This, this is the second book I think I, second book I wrote? Third. And um, I don't know if it's still in print or not. Look, look at the do. Also, look at my teeth. It's before I got my braces. <laughs> In fact, my retainer broke and I have to get it fixed. Um, anyways, this has a lot of information for hand quilting. Very good imagery. Um, and one thing that I always insisted in our books was that we have both left and right handed, okay? Because I am a left hander. Then, but I want to say, and you don't need this. We're going to go through everything here, but it's like $12.95, and I think we have 20 in the store. But then when we did all things quilting, it was kind of a culmination of all my little how-to books, and there's a whole part in here about hand quilting. So if you've got this book, you might want to go check it out too. Um, I... I quilt differently than most people quilt, okay? And on thequiltshow.com, we have people that quilt quite differently than me. And one would be Lucian Newman, Suzanne Marshall. I mean, everybody approaches it differently, but I'm going to teach you how I do it, okay? So one of the things I want you to know is that the fabric you use is really important. And I, and I learned that the hard way. If you're going to do beautiful hand quilting, like the one behind me, you want it to show. So if you are choosing fabrics that have a print, like, okay, like Roberta's quilt that I was showing you, intricate, intricate quilting will, will not really enhance anything one way or another. So if you want to do feathers, if you want to do um, all that fancy stuff, 
pick fabrics that are more solid, if not solid. Two times in the beginning, I made two quilts because I was strictly a hand quilter then, and it was printed up fabric, and I kept thinking, you're going to be able to see these feathers. You're going to be able to see these things, and you didn't, and it was because it was too busy, and I believe it was Liberty Fabric that I used for the for one of them, and it just got lost, okay? So make sure you're choosing a fabric that's going to show slash like a plain limb. Now, when you go into the store to buy your fabric for hand quilting and or you're going to your stash, what you wanna do is take a needle and needle it because it's very interesting. Let's say I've got two brands of solid bolts that I'm purchasing from a quilt store, okay? Two brands, um, and they're the same red. Everything about them's the same, okay? But I might needle one, and that just means take your needle and just kind of go through, or pin and go through, easier than the other one. I, I don't understand it, but it's truth. So if you're gonna use fabric that is, fabric for hand quilting, you're going to want to do that. Go needle it, okay? The second thing is, is don't use cheap fabric for this. A lot, and, and I'm going to, that's going to be my mantra through this whole thing. Don't do that. Hand quilting takes time, and you want to make sure that this treasure is generationally handed down. The other thing that I learned was um, my Second quilt that I hand quilted was a sailboat quilt that I got the top at a street fair in Berkeley for 35 bucks. It was a twin size sailboat quilt. And I thought it was perfect because you guys know how much I love boats and all that. And Joey was about to go into a big boy bed. So I got this to hand quilt it. Well, it had, the fiber had polyester in it. And I don't know if it was a combination or a blend or whatever. Um, I will say that the needle stuck and it was a bear. It was like sticky wicky, okay? So I would steer clear of blends. Now, that was a million years ago and obviously things have changed. Like for instance, I have hand quilted on my Silk Dupiani and I've even backed it with fabric prep by Quilter Select, and it was easy to needle. But in the end, it's about how you needle it. And we will talk about needles down the road. The other thing I want to talk about is the backing. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a little slug here of water. Thank you. Um, the backing, and I've said this before, but like this quilt here is primarily white on top, right? So I want the backing to be something really light in color. What did I do? I think I did a light, light yellow, I think. What did I do? Yeah. This isn't the time to use up all your cray-cray fabrics and all that because it could potentially show through. And on polyester batting, it I can guarantee it will show through. Cotton, maybe not so much. But again, batting is on Friday, and I did not suggest either of those right now. I'm just saying this is a consideration. Um, another thing is on the back, when you're hand quilting, remember this is completely different than machine quilting, um, you do not want to use a sheet. And I think that's a... a problem that beginners do is they go, oh, it's big. I don't have to piece it together, blah, blah, blah. Sheet has a very high thread count and it is a bear to a hand quilt through. That said, for hand quilting, I love my batiks, but I would run in the other direction. How do I know? I know. In fact, I made a quilt back in the day that I loved. It was from Quilts, Quilts, Quilts. It was one of those samplers and I put batik on the backing and I was hand quilting it. I never finished it because it's so tightly woven. And I'm not bashing batiks. I'm just saying, don't do that. <laughs> and even if the quilt were primarily batik on top, I would consider machine quilting it. All right. And then the other thing is that like, let's say you do have to piece the back together because what's fabric, you know, 42 inches wide or something. 
Oh, and I would pre-wash that fabric too, just to get all the junk out of it because your hands are going to be around it a lot. You know, it's dirty, it's got additives and all that. I would pre-wash it. But then what you're going to want to do is cut off the salvage where you will be piecing it together. The salvage, of course, is on the side of the fabric and it's where the threads run back and forth across the loom. You want to cut it off because you do not want to have to hand quilt through that. The other thing I do when hand quilting is after I've trimmed off those salvages and I've stitched it together, I will also press those seams open. Because if I press them to one side, that's going to make a big fat lump somewhere, right? So I like to press those seams open. If I'm pressing those seams open, I'm going to want to use a thread that kind of at least matches. So for instance, back here, with the yellow, I would use a, a white or a cream thread, but I would not use a dark gray thread or anything like that because when you press open, what happens is you can see the little threads going like that, okay? And then um, you are going to make the backing bigger and how big you make it depends on if you're working on a hoop or a frame. If you're working on a hoop, I would want it at least six inches bigger around all sides, at least. And we'll get to that later. So uh, it, everything's kind of inter intertwined here, but number one, don't cheap out on your backing or the fabric that's in your quilt. Number two, oh, um, you will also want to make sure you do the appropriate backing for the, for the fabric. You're going to want to make sure the fabric needles nicely and don't waste your time with wild prints. It is not going to show. Now, I will tell you something. When I learned to machine quilt, it was before the Bernina stitch regulator came along. And it took me 150 hours to be a B, <laughs> not even an A, a B. And I still don't put myself at A uh, because now I'm on the Q20 and, um, and it has a double stitch regulator. And it's like, it's, 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 it's been the ruin of me in as much as I, I'm addicted to that machine. <laughs> I, that's where I want to quilt and I don't care what it is. Oh, speaking of which, I still do have $100 coupons of which I would happily send one to you before you buy a Bernina machine that's over a thousand dollars and then Bernina will send you from Chicago, Illinois, a hundred dollar check to spend on whatever you want. And one other thing, speaking of Bernina, they always have a thing called BU and they came out with their two new machines and what they are is they are inspired by K-Facet. So the smaller one has a killer, I don't even know the number, I don't know if it's a 500 or 400, I don't know what it is, a uh, turquoise body with his um, flowers on it, and then the 700 series is a little bit lighter, but they're beautiful. I mean, you know how I love Cave, to the point of we will be doing another project with this fabric. So uh, let's see what other questions. Oh, thank you, Lilo, for putting up that it's Metcalf Mortuary. Um, okay. Oh, that's interesting, Rooster, that you have a set of placemats, like the one with the floral edge. You know what? That, that might be, I mean, obviously this is way too small unless you're on one heck of a diet, but I'm, I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to playing with this. Okay, Australia. A napkin. Okay, see, you guys are the best. No cheap fabric. I'm late. Um, okay. And, and Kathy agrees with me. She says the thread count per inch of the fabric really affects the, how even your stitches are. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, Rose, you covered all the mistakes I made in the beginning. <laughs> How do we know these things? In fact, I'm doing a thing for C&T. They're putting together a program that um, we're going to be taping, but I'm going to be the keynote, so I've got to pre-record it today. And I get, I got the subject matter of getting your piecing 
well done, you know, how to make things work. And I thought, how am I going to fill a half hour with that? I've got notes this long and it's all every single thing that I goofed up on. <laughs> I could use other words. All right. So on Friday, I am going to talk about um, batting. And you might say, hey, man, where's Barbara Black? Well, Barbara Black is down at Long Beach. She works for Quilts Inc. when they're in the major um, in the major shows. She babysits all of us teachers. If you go to the website, go to the BOM 2022, and you scroll down to um, Barbara Black, Black Garden Party Down Under, month eight. She uh, has put together a video, and yes, there are videos for all of them, but basically she was not concerned not being there because she um, said it's pretty repetitive uh, what this month is. Now you're just kind of grueling it through. And remember, we have the forum to ask each other questions. So Barbara, I hope you're having a blast there. Okay, then what about this? Dee's class is on Saturday. And she is showing us how to do um, wool applique. Now, you know how much I love wool applique. She does it a little bit different. Um, I almost cried when she took apart the kit that we have available for you when I saw the fabric. is absolutely beautiful. We don't have a lot, but... Um, you might want to consider getting this because it's a beautiful, beautiful project. And I believe the wools are hand dyed. Also, there's a pattern on the site that you can purchase too. I just learned that this morning. Okay. And so then the other thing, it's like, it's always something, but I got to keep, I got to keep us honest and let you know what's going on. We, um, let the star members have first shot at the Oak shots, which we're going to be doing when we do my improv class, when we get back from taping, um, we blew, we blew through these. All right. We blew through this colorway. We still have this colorway. And honestly, I, I'm going to be working with this colorway, but I don't know that I don't like this one better. I mean, you can't lose with either of them. And if you are interested, we still have these in the store. If you are interested in this colorway and, or we run out of this, we have what Suzanne calls a uh, notify me. And so you put your name in the notify me, and then we let you know when they get in stock. I'm going to say this, though. It doesn't mean you bought it. It doesn't mean anything. We just let you know. And as soon as you know, by George, get on it. Because these were limited. They could only get so many to us. And we knew they would be a hit, an absolute hit. So, all right. Let's see what we have here. Ah, oh, since Simply Quilts. You know, I went to try and look up. There was a uh, a segment when my dad talked about building a quilt frame, and I, I couldn't I couldn't find it. I was trying to find it on the net. It was there for a while, and then I thought, gosh, if I even see it, I don't know if I really want to see it. It might unglue me. So, anyways, on Friday, we're going to talk about batting with hand quilting, how to piece batting together. I mean, all sorts of things. And remember, hand quilting, machine quilting, apples and oranges. And I'm going to try to remember to keep saying that because it is a different process that you use different materials with. All right. So, whoa, I'm back. I'll see you Friday. Barbara, have a blast. I told, I'm not going to tell you who, but I did tell her to go kiss somebody for me. And she did on the lips. <laughs> and I won't tell you what I said next. <laughs> Okie dokie. Yeah, I remember that, Marie, my dad. So, okay. All right, guys. Um, I so appreciate you. I thank you for, you know, spending time with me. There is a place at, on that mortuary uh, for Heather that you can send a note to the family. Uh, I'm also going to send a card. The, they're gathering, uh, they don't have flowers. They uh, have a whole tree planting program, which I 
love. So you can buy a tree or 10 trees or whatever, and then they the company will go around and replenish trees where they're needed. I, that is, my grandpa's thing was always go plant a tree. So I think that's just absolutely lovely. Um, again, it's Metcalf Mortuary. 10 o'clock Pacific is the Zoom. Uh, she'll be in competition. They'll be in competition with Dee. Um, but you can catch up with Dee after the fact too, right? And that would be 11 o'clock Utah time. So figure out what you are in there. All right. Okay. Um, Lori, with that, I love this special guild too. We found each other. <laughs> so see you guys later. Love you so much. Bye-bye.